Welcome back everyone to this lecture series on using logistic regression for multi-class problems. So far we've only used logistic regression for binary classification. That is when we only have two classes. Luckily for us, Scikit-Learn makes it really easy to use the logistic regression model for data sets that actually have more than two classes. Let's go ahead and check it out by starting off with the data and developing a model. Okay, here I am at the notebook, and what we're going to be working with is the very classic IRIS data set. If you've done any sort of machine learning studying, you've probably come across this data set. It's extremely famous. It's basically a data set that consists of three different flower species and their various features. So here are the three flower species, Iris setosa, Iris versicolor, and Iris virginica. And there's measurements of these flowers for their sepal lengths and widths, as well as their petal lengths and widths. So we can go ahead and read in this data set. I've already imported NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, and Matplotlib. And we have this data set underneath the data folder for you. So you can say PD read CSV. And then you'll see data folder. You should be able to autocomplete iris.csv. So we won't focus too much on this particular data set because it's really quite simple. The main thing we really want to focus on is the fact that it's going to have three species or three classes and that they're actually strings. So let's see how Scikit-Learn handles that. You'll see that there's four features, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So what we can do is just a little bit of statistical analysis. I can check DF info, and you'll notice that there's 150 rows, and then we can check DF describe to see the value range. So here we can see the value ranges for the various features of sepal length, sepal width, and petal length, and petal width the minimums, maximums, standard deviations, average values, etc. Let's check out the species column because that is the label column. So we say species dot value underscore counts. And so we have Virginica, Setosa, and Versicolor, those three species of flowers. The main idea we have here is can we develop a model that we can use so that later on in the field, if we pick a flower and take its measurements of sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, this model can actually predict what the species of flower is, so we don't need to bother some professor of biology to identify the flower for us. So we can see how imbalanced or balanced the classes are by doing a count plot of the actual data itself. So I can say x is equal to species and data is equal to df. And here we see that it's actually perfectly balanced. You have 50 instances of each class, so we don't have to worry about any issues of something being imbalanced. And we can do things like a scatter plot to see how separated the classes are. For example, I can do a scatter plot of petal length versus petal width. So we'll say petal underscore length y equals petal underscore width and data is df. Run that and we can see the scatter plot. However, we have an issue. I didn't actually separate this out based off hue. So the last thing I want to add in is hue is equal to the species column. So now that we check out this plot, I can see that the Setosa species, just based off petal length and petal width, is actually quite separated, but it looks like Versicolor and Virginica tend to be a little more similar. So we're gonna have probably some issues on separating out Versicolor and Virginica perfectly, depending on how luckily we get with our train test split. But Setosa should be quite easily identified compared to the other two species. And if we want, we can do a pair plot for the entire data frame, where we say SNS pair plot, pass in the data frame, and then also pass in the hue species, run that. And depending on your computer, it could take a little bit of time, but essentially we can see that in all of these, the setosa, the blue points, are quite separated from the other two. And in certain features, Versicolor and Virginica are actually quite similar. So you can see based off sepal length and sepal width, there's a lot of crossover between Versicolor and Virginica. However, they're a little more separated when it comes to petals, but setosa is just separated on all those features. Finally, we can also check out the correlation of the features by saying SNS or Seaborn heat map for the correlation. And let's go ahead and say annotation is equal to true here. Run that. And so based off the results of this heat map, we can see that there's some really strong relationships based off just the flower's physical traits. For example, petal length and petal width 
have high correlation values with seat bowl length, which kind of makes sense. You would expect that as your petal lengths and petal widths get larger, so do your seat bowl lengths because it's essentially just a larger flower in general. So we can see those correlations, and now what we're going to do is allow you to explore visually the data further if you want, but we'll move on to the train test split and scaling and prepping the data. So in the next lecture, we can focus on the actual model. So we're gonna say x is equal to df drop the species column, and then we'll say axes is equal to one, and then y is equal to df species. Now what's really cool about scikit-learn is we don't need to actually worry about encoding species to integers or doing any sort of one-hot encoding. In fact, scikit-learn has no problem with you passing classes as strings. So keep that in mind that you don't have to actually do any sort of processing for that label in regards to logistic regression for actually dealing with this y being in a string format. Because it's the label, scikit-learn is totally okay with these classes being strings. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is separate this out into a training set and test set. We'll say from sklearn.model selection import train test split. And we're also going to be scaling the data. So let's go ahead and right now import from preprocessing the standard scaler. Okay, so first things first, we have to do the train test split. I'll do my shift tab as always, so I can copy over that tuple unpacking. So all the way down here, same thing we always do last time. Go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to paste that in. Now something to keep in mind is we're dealing with a pretty small data set. It only has 150 rows. So I'll decrease the test size just a little bit so that it's 25% of the entire data set. And to make sure we get the same split, go ahead and set your random state to 101. Everything else, we'll just keep the default. And now let's go ahead and scale our data. We'll create a scalar object, so standard scalar. And then what I'm going to do is create my scaled version of my X training data. And I will call fit transform to save one extra step. And I only do this on X train as we've previously discussed. And then scaled X test data will be scalar transform. We no longer fit to the test data. Don't want any data leakage and then we have scaled X train and scaled X test. Okay, so if you want, you can explore the data visually of some other seaborne plots, but so far what we have is our train test split and our data has been scaled. So we have the features and label separated, our training set and our testing set, and the scaled features. Coming up next, we're gonna move on to building out a multi-class logistic regression model and exploring how we can use grid search CV to actually check out multiple penalty types. I'll see you there.